Hey, if you're single, let's talk. My name is Faith Shropshire, and this is the Single Life Podcast. If you are single, that means you are not married, then this podcast is for you. I've got the five things that say God is preparing you for marriage. Just kidding. I don't. Someone already did that. I want to talk to us about being content in the state that we're in. And I'm not talking about the United States, okay, New Mexico, Texas, New York, wherever you're from. I'm not talking about that state. I'm talking about the state of singleness. How can we be content in this state? Because here's the thing. If you're single, you're single. You know what I mean? And you don't want to train yourself to rush things or force things. That's like, you know, whenever you're a kid and some of y'all might have done it as an adult, like you think you just have to fart and that's all it's going to be is just a fart and you force it and you know that turns into straight up crap. You know what I mean? Like, and that's the same thing. If you try to force yourself out of that single state, try to settle or just compromise, whatever it is, it just doesn't end good. And so how can we be content in this single state? I want to read a couple verses and then we're going to look at ways that we can be content. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7, 8, and this is Paul. And like a lot of single people like do not want to hear this scripture. And honestly, like I was the same and I felt like like only married people would read this verse. And it's like, yo, easy for you to say and quote Paul when you're stinking married. You know what I mean? But I just want to encourage us today because the state that we're in, single, is the state that we're in. And so why not be content? You know, Jesus was content in the state that he was in. And we read from Paul that Paul was content in the state that he was in as a single man. First Corinthians 7, 8 says this, but I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. Paul was saying, it's good for you to be single. And I would encourage you, like, say that it's good for me to be single. You know why? Because you don't want to be in the wrong relationship. So it's good for you to be single. If it's a desire of your heart to get married, then God will give you the desire of your heart. But until that happens, like you don't want to force something. You don't want to rush something. You want to be content in the state that you are in. And what state are you in? If you're watching this, you're single or you're married and you need to help some of your single friends out. But you want to be content in the state that you are in because y'all if Jesus comes back tomorrow he's coming back soon if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life you can do that Romans 10 9 says believe in your heart confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord Jesus is returning and everyone who is called upon the name of the Lord everyone who is saved is going to heaven with them and it's happening soon and y'all when we stand before him it's not going to be us and our spouse It's going to be us and him. That's why it's so important. Just be content in the state that you're in. And if the Lord Jesus tarries and you meet that husband or that wife, then great. But don't force anything. Don't rush anything. Don't allow yourself to be sad in this state. Don't allow yourself to be frustrated and annoyed in this state. Choose to be content in this state. Look what Philippians 4.11 says. Again, Paul is talking. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am in to be content as a single. Let's just make that confession. It's good that I'm single. You know why? Because I don't want to be in a toxic relationship. I don't want to rush something. I don't want to be in a relationship where I'm settling. And so it's good that I'm single until God brings the husband or the wife, whoever it is for you. Obviously, if you're a man, he's going to bring a wife. If you're a woman, he's going to bring a husband. God doesn't do love is love. Do you understand? It's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Hello. So the state that you're in right now, you want to be content until that happens. You don't want to be distracted. Distracted is the opposite of content. Let me tell you what content means. It means a state of satisfaction, peaceful happiness. 
That's how singles should be, especially believers that are single. Instead of just like hot to trot, trying to find a man, trying to find a wife, just so distracted. You should be in a state of satisfaction. Your life should literally be pointing people to the Father. Paul goes on to say, whenever people are single, what do they have? They have full focus. They have opportunity to be fully focused on God. But whenever they're married, then they have to do the what a wife, what a husband is supposed to do. They take on someone else. And there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, marriage is beautiful. Marriage is amazing if it is God ordained. That's why you want to be content as a single. And then whenever God brings that person into your life, you know, this is from God. This isn't something I rushed. This isn't something I forced because just like that fart, hello, it turns to crap. Look what distracted means. Distracted is unable to concentrate because one's mind is preoccupied. (laughs) Guys. We can't be preoccupied with getting married. We can't be preoccupied with having a wedding. We can't be preoccupied with all these natural things. Do you know that there are people that are dying and going to hell? We have to set our face like Flint. Paul even said, even if you are married, like you need to together set your face like Flint. Don't be so preoccupied with that. Like use all of your energies and all of your forces. Obviously, if you have kids, raising your kids in the admonition of the Lord. Lord, but then also going out and telling people that Jesus is coming soon. We cannot be distracted. Paul said, whatever state I'm in, I am content. What does that mean? I'm satisfied. I have a state of satisfaction and peaceful happiness. So how can you and I as singles, okay, in a world where they, um, prioritize relationships, toxic relationships, fornication, all of these things, just living with each other in a state of being single. How can I be content? How can I be peacefully happy and not something you put on? Guys, whenever you spend time with God, you you won't be fake because his love is so big and so huge towards you. You will actually be content with you and him. And then when someone comes into your life, then the two of you together who are as individuals content with him and so in love with him, then together it will be as the Bible says, one can put a thousand, two can put 10,000. I like to say it this way to the singles of our church. Listen, if they're not putting down a thousand by themselves, then you better not hook your life up with them. Then it's not going to be two will be 10,000. Do you understand? You're going to be dragging them along, whether the girl or the boy, whoever it is that you're hooking your life up with. You want to make sure, hey, they're content in that state of single. They're content. They are peacefully happy because they have him. And y'all, he feels all in all. He is enough. But how do I get to that place? Especially if maybe you've come out of the world and you have, you've already been in relationships. You've already, you know, exposed yourself to some things. You have to renew your mind. That's what Romans 12, one and two says, renew your mind. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's going to be some changes you have to make, but here's the thing. You don't have to make them alone. He says, I will never leave you or forsake you. He gave us the Holy Spirit who is our our helper, who is our guide, who is our restrainer. Maybe you're used to being fast. Maybe you're used to dressing a certain way to get guys attention or guys, maybe you're used to like being a player, whatever. He'll be your restrainer. He'll help you out. So in this state of single, you're not toxic. You're not a stinking weirdo. You're not isolated. You're peacefully happy and showing off the love of God and ripping people out of hell and laying hands on the sick and doing what you know to do. So how do I do it? This is the first thing I want to share today. How do I be content as a single? And this is it. Fully surrender to him. Y'all surrender looks a certain way. Whenever I think of surrender, I always think of the moment where Jesus is about to die on the cross and give his life for me and for you, but mostly for me. Amen. (laughs) He gave his life for us. And it was like going to be hard. Like it wasn't going to be something easy because he said, if there's any way, God, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. That is true surrender. Not my will, but your will. Look what the Bible says in Galatians 2.20. If we're going to be content, peacefully happy, then we have to fully surrender to him. 
And when people don't fully surrender to him, they won't be content. They will be distracted. And we're not called to be distracted. Do you understand? The enemy would would want nothing more than for believers to be distracted. Why? Because he can pick them off. Just like whenever you're distracted in driving, uh, it's easier for you to get in a car accident, right? Like you're not paying attention. But whenever you're focused, then you you can handle whatever comes your way. Do you understand? Like if a car swerves, then you're focused. You know what to do. But believers that are distracted, they're easy to pick off. John 10, 10 says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Well, what is that abundant life? That's content. In whatever state you're in, you're content. Why? Because he feels all in all. I'm not saying you're complacent. That's not content. I'm saying you're content. Complacent says, I'm good. I'm not moving forward. Content says, it's good with me and him and we're going to keep growing. If it remains me and him for the rest of my life, then I'm peacefully happy. If a spouse comes along, I'm going to be peacefully happy. In whatever state I'm in, I'm in content and I will continue to grow in him. Right? Isn't that what Paul even said? That I might know him and the power of his resurrection. I'm content. I'm, con- I'm going to continue to grow. I'm not complacent. I'm content. But so many believers, single believers, they're distracted. And what can you do to keep from being distracted? Fully surrender to him. Galatians 2.20 says this, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Surrender looks a certain way. Surrender is saying, just like Jesus did, not my will, but your will be done. Well, it's a desire of my heart to get married. That's great. Surrender it. What are you going to do? Just think about it. Have a bazillion Pinterest boards of all of your future wedding plans. It's like, okay, bro, that that wedding idea was cool like 10 years ago. You know what I mean? But it's been 10 years. What are you going to do? Fantasize? You're going to live in the realm of fantasy? What is that? That's distracted. And then you miss out on so many valuable moments to actually make an impact in the kingdom of God. Why? Because you're not surrendered. And people that are distracted, You know why they're distracted? They're not surrendered. There's a place for you as a single to be peacefully happy and not a put on, not a, I don't need a man, not a women's lib, not any of that. Just peacefully happy, content where you are, hearing his voice, and you'll be in the right place at the right time every single time. Whatever state you're in, Paul said, I'm content. And you can be that way too as a single. Look at what surrender looks like according to Abraham. In Genesis 22, I'm going to read a couple of these verses because I want us to look at the picture of surrender. Surrender looks a certain way. It's not a little bit of me and a little bit of him. It's all of him and none of me. All of him and none of me. Well, I just don't think I can live like that, but you can because you've been made in the image of God. It's not you who live, but Christ lives in you. And if Jesus was able to live surrendered, then you will too. And you'll be able to walk in the blessing and the fruit that comes from living a surrendered life. Abraham, it it tells the story of Abraham in this way. Genesis 22, one through 14. It came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, And Abraham said, here I am, total surrender. Then he said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to worship you. We will come back. He was fully surrendered. He had full, complete trust. Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord. I believe it's Proverbs 3, 5. Let me double check. But what did Abraham completely trusted in God? That's what surrender looks like. Completely trusting. Y'all, God is a big God and the world is a big world. Okay. So if it's a desire of your heart to get married and there's like specifics, write down the specifics. Do not settle. Don't just go for whatever, you know, breathes. Hello. And then they, one time they lifted their hands of worship. Oh, I'll take him. No, like have a standard. Do you know what I mean? But then surrender that to the father and just be content. Whatever state you're in, be content. Proverbs 3. 
Um, five. It's five and six. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. Do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge him. And he will direct and make straight and plain your paths. That's what Abraham did. He just simply trusted in God and said, listen, yo, he's telling me to crucify this. He's telling me to surrender this. So I surrender it. And I believe we're going to be back. Even if this kid dies, God's going to raise him from the dead. And we're going to be back with you. He had full confidence in the power of God. And this was under an old covenant. Guys, we're, we have a new covenant with even better promises. Why are we frustrated? Why are we distracted? Why? Because we haven't surrendered. When you surrender, you cannot help but be peacefully happy because you know that King of Kings and Lord of Lords who knows your name, knows how many hairs are on your head. He's got you. Just say that wherever you are. He's got me. Guys, he's got you. So you have nothing to fear. You don't have to make something happen. Well, I need to have this so I can have this and and I need this and this isn't happening. Just surrender and then you'll be content. You'll be peacefully happy and you'll find yourself in the right place at the right time. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it on Isaac, his son, and he took fire in his hand and a knife. Two of them went together. Isaac spoke to Abraham and said, my father, uh, look, the fire, the wood, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, my God, my son, God will provide. So they went up to the altar. They put him down on there and Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Verse 11. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket, its horns by its horns. So Abraham went, took the ram, offered it up. Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. Just like that song. I will be content in every circumstance. Jaira, you are enough, right? Because he is. He's enough. And when you fully surrender to him, it's like you see all him is. And him is so good. Do you understand? I know my English is off, but he is so good. He loves you so much. How can I be peacefully happy in this state? What do I need to do? I need to surrender to him. And look what Isaiah said of Jesus. Just like I talked about at the beginning, Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. Isaiah prophesied this about Jesus for the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I've set my face like a flint. I'm not distracted. I'm surrendered to him. And so I'm peacefully happy. Why are people not happy? Why are people confused? Why are people emotional basket cases? Because they're not married? Because they're not getting some? Because they're not having sex? No, because they're not surrendered. And single, when you decide I'm surrendering, and just do it today. You know what I mean? Today, God, I surrender totally to you. Just like Jesus said, I'm not going to say anything unless you tell me to say it. I'm not going to do anything unless you tell me to do it. When you decide to do that today, and then tomorrow, decide to do it tomorrow. And then the next day, decide to do it the next day. You'll find yourself completely surrendered to him. And while you surrender to him, while you're setting your face like Flint, surrendering to him, you'll realize, gosh, I'm such at peace. My life is so filled with joy. My life is so full. Why? Because you'll be content in the state that you're in and you'll realize that he fills all in all. He can handle you way better than you can handle you. So be content today. Be peacefully happy today. But how are you going to do it as a single? You're going to surrender to him. I love you. I'll see you next time. So